Hello and welcome to another NYX project. In this project, it's nothing too exciting. I'm replacing double glazing door hinges. And that is because the hinges I've got on my existing door, it's quite a heavy door, it's on an outbuilding in my garden, have failed. This door I bought second hand because I built this cabin on the cheap. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's about 30 years old, the door, and, and slowly over time the hinges have slipped. Now I've replaced these hinges once a few years ago with exactly the same hinges and they've just gone again. And it's got to the point now that I've packed out some of the hinges with washers or, or in the lower hinge case, um, I've actually packed it out with this, this, this big lump of plastic and it's led to actually that bottom hinge breaking, which is, uh, which is a sign that the door's just too heavy for these, these hinges. So this is what I plan to do and that is to fit flag hinges. They take a lot more weight. They're mounted to the front of the door. I've bought four of them to replace these four hinges. And, um, and yeah, this, these, these new seats for the flag hinges will go in much in the same location as the old hinges. Now, what's led me to the decision of doing this myself is I called out the UPVC doctor locally. He came and gave me advice, told me if he replaced these hinges, it would cost 300, 350 pounds plus VAT, and that he would be back every couple of months readjusting them for me. And he said, and I don't want my van parked outside your house because all your neighbors will think that I do a bad job. So that was that. So his quote to replace the door, admittedly including this side panel with an opening window was between 750 pounds for supply only to a thousand pounds fitted now that's a lot of money now you'll see in the links in the description at the bottom of this uh, this video that these hinges aren't very expensive at all so i think well it's got to be worth a go i also had a look on youtube as we all do to try and find how to do it and i couldn't find a clear video so here we go this is the first time i've done this i am a total diyer i'm not a upvc fitter i don't have jigs or any of the professional kit i'm gonna give it a go I'm going to use my common sense and well if you've watched any of my other videos eventually I kind of get there and it looks okay and with the benefit of editing you should see a nice clean way of how to do it if only I could watch this video first anyway so yes thank you for finding Nick's projects I hope I can help you fix your UPVC door hinges too so the first job is going to be to remove this door but before I do that even though this door's totally on the wonk I am going to just run a pencil down the side here so I know the location of the door when it all comes off and I'm going to mark again those lines so when the door comes off I know exactly where I'm starting from and it will give me a guide for things like you know the the, the base of the hinges those flag hinges has got to fit in this void here basically so I need to make sure they're going to fit comfortably within that space and not be too far over to the left okay so for this section all hinges are different, but this particular type of hinge I've got on my door, I had to remove a little plastic cap, top and bottom, I'm afraid we didn't film that, that's very straightforward. Um, and then once you open the door, you need to remove this tiny little grub screw, which is held in place with, a, with an Allen key fitting. Um, for what it's worth, these two screws here are your adjustment screws, so they can move it backwards and forwards or tilt it this way and that. This door is as adjusted up as it can. As you can see here, I've even added washers on this hinge to try and push it a bit further. This door's really having a party, it's time for it to go. So that's the first bit. The next thing is back in the Allen key box. I'm sure most of us have got a big selection of these from uh, IKEA flat pack furniture, etc. And using an Allen key at the bottom, you can bang this little peg, there it is, can you see it coming out the top there? This little peg holds the hinge in place. So I'm just gonna get them started on each of the four hinges, pull them out, then the door will detach and I'll lift the door away. There you go, told you I didn't have any professional tools. <laughs> so this door, I'm just making sure there's, there's less than a millimeter clearance there, that once those hinges pop out, once I take those pins out, obviously the door's gonna slip. So I'm gonna attach this back, pin it back to this building. You're gonna to have to just kind of makeshift this with whatever your scenario. So when it, the door drops, it's caught by this. Um, and then, yeah, you won't see this shot because I'm gonna need the cameraman's help. <laughs> I'm gonna lift this door out and, uh, and, then, and then we'll be good to go. So the door's off now, but I just wanted to show you this because it might well be helpful. This is obviously the grub screw that I've removed. You will not remove the center pin without that grub screw removed. A pair of long nose pliers with a perfect tool to get in through that door hinge and pull this through and you can see there's a little notch in that pin which is where the grub screw holds that pin in place for security so um so yeah you need all those things and then the door 
folds away and it dropped onto that wood that we prepared earlier with the bricks, uh, revealing just the door hinge now. There we go. Using the, um, the drill, just because there's quite a few screws, a little bit of hammer encouragement. There we go. So yeah, what I've done now is I've measured that middle point between the top and the bottom hinge markers, and I've taken a packer that came with a new hinge pack, and I've made a template that gives me a line that I can line up with that center marker. I've just measured halfway along that um, packer, and now I can mark where the holes are gonna go. My door frame is in terrible condition. Obviously the old hinges before my ownership had been adjusted several times. So what I'm gonna do, it's even scarier still, but if you've got this problem, which I doubt you will have, I've taken that original middle point. You can see I've rubbed out a lot of these lines now to try and tidy things up. And I've measured exactly 10 centimeters down on the bottom two hinges and 10 centimeters up on the top two hinges from that centre point to give me a new mounting location so I can get away from all of these closely um, positioned screw holes. So slightly different mounting on the door, the screws go into the door from this direction on the existing hinges, the new ones are gonna be surface mounted um, and will give a much better grip on the door. So you can see the old hinges, I've got a top and a bottom marker. That's enabled me to get a center marker. I've measured up 10 centimeters. So upwards on the top two hinges, downwards on the bottom two hinges, if you're doing something similar, that gives me a new center marker. Now I have checked that I've got clearance within the frame at the top here so the hinge can go on and not obscure the top corner of the door. In order to make sure that the hinges are mounted on the frame at the right depth. I've invented this very technical little tool. This is a bit of a plastic angle I had in my garage. I've cut a notch in it exactly to the right depth. So all I need to do is place a pencil in that notch. Can you see this? And run it up and down the door and it will give me a perfect guideline to mount the new hinges on the door. This is the template I made earlier with that center line, an upwards arrow and a downwards arrow so I can't get it wrong. I line it up with that center arrow, make sure with that new angle edge line that it's to the edge of that. And now all I do is mark these holes. I do this for each of the four hinges so the plastic's ready to be drilled. Right, so I'm just going through each hinge now. I'm using a metal bit because behind this UPVC, I'm delighted to see there is a big old lump of metal. Um, so the bottom two are for the guidance pins on the hinges that you'll see in a minute, and the top three are for actual screws to go in. Right, okay. So now, these are to go in like that. That's in alignment with that. We're getting there. Now to rub off all these pencil markings before I go any further. Because my door has so many holes in it and I'm a bit short of time today, I'm literally using a bit of electrical insula insulation tape. I've cleaned off all of those pencil markings just to take out, just to draw the eye away from these awful holes. Okay, so I've ended up, I was not on camera, I've ended up using the uh, scarper tape I've used on other projects, especially the Volvo, because I know that stuff doesn't unstick. The electrical tape I put behind did a certain job at hiding the holes. I think this is much better, even though it's a different texture to the UPVC, you know, it's fitted in nicely. That goes on first, and then the, um, obviously making sure that the three, I call it the traffic lights are up on this particular type of hinge and the ones we've linked to, that goes towards the top. Hinge sits on that. And then the guidance pins, which are these two, which by the way are, require a four millimeter drill. Um, whereas the top three screws, you just want to use a 3.5 because you actually want these to pinch and pull in. That goes in there like that. So that's the first hinge base fitted three more of those to do and then we'll fit the actual flags to the front of the door, offer it up and uh, fingers crossed everything, uh, everything fits. Next thing is you'll find that these go in here. There is actually uh, an, adjustment, an adjustment of the height of these from underneath which you can do once the doors are in place if you need to push them up or down. On top of that goes this little collar which enables you to open and close the door and then of course this is the first part of the flag hinge, which will go on that door. 
So now I'm very tempted to offer up the door because you can see even though our center point is here, actually the hinges will need to be from the center point upwards. And with this little spacer here, I'm gonna see if I can offer the door up, fold these on, mark their positions so I'm really, really on it. Um, so that's the next job and it's not gonna be easy. Okay, so we're really moving on now. I've just put the door, the door isn't attached to its hinges at all, it's just laid in the frame. And I've used these packers, we'll link to these, they're just double glazing or, or building packers. Um, and I've used those to space everything to make sure that the door's sitting properly inside the frame. Um, and then it's simply a case that um, I'm gonna, you can see here that center line I marked, 10 centimeters up from the original center line, that is the base of that hinge in every case. So it's all, it's all nicely aligned. So those hinges are ready to be fitted now. I'm going to take the door back off, fit the hinges in exactly the same place. Right, okay, so there's my center line. And if you remember on the door, that was exactly the base of the hinge. So I marked a little H for the hinge and showed the shape. So I really couldn't mix it up with the numerous lines on here. Um, and I know that basically I'm gonna, it depends on your door, but I'm gonna place mine halfway across this little notch and then adjust it back and that's gonna basically give me the same pilot holes on each one. So on these hinges, you have two guidance pins and four screws. Now, every door's different. On my door, I'm just gonna be dr drilling two four mil holes there. I'm then gonna put the bracket in place and then use the actual screw attachment that goes over the top. So you can see that sits in there like that. And, and this adjusts backwards and forwards anyway, so you've got a little bit of adjustment. Those pins will go in there and then I'll use this as a guide to drill my other four holes and I'm going to use two different lengths of screws due to the profile of this door. Two longer ones, two shorter ones, plus the guidance pins that will hold the door. Don't want to go too far because there's a rubber seal behind there and it's just literally a little nip just to guidance. There we go. That's got it. Right. So now I could drill pilot holes for the screws, but I want the screws to really pull. So I've got shorter screws to go on the front two because of the profile again and two and longer screws here to go on the back. So here's the long ones at the back. Short ones at the front. The whole time by the way I'm checking against my lines that this is going in level. have to rub out all these lines as well but I'm going to do that now for all four hinges. Okay so looking at this hinge the door is now hung I've adjusted it up and it's working beautifully I've just got to do the finishing touches but if you're using these hinges as well this adjustment here moves the hinge in and out um, so backwards and forwards if you like uh, left and right you've got an adjustment at the bottom here with an allen key that moves the hinge up and down and you've got one at the top again with an Allen key, which just moves it on a cam sort of out and round and back. So you've got really good adjustment on these. Um, you can see mine's adjusted up quite high. So in an ideal world, I would have knocked up those pilot holes either on the hinge or, or knock them down on the hinge or on the base of the hinge. I could have knocked them up a little to lose that. But you know what? It's fine, it works absolutely okay. If it irritates me with time, I'll change it, but it's working better than I've ever had this door working. As I've said, it was a used door and it seems to be working well. So these caps now are the next phase. These, uh, these just go over the top. So that's the reverse of those caps on the hinges for security. Obviously with the door shut with an outside mounted hinge, that plate will then be totally and utterly locked in position. You've then got two more caps. There's this cap, which is round, and that goes on the top and just pushes down. And you've got this weird cap that goes at the bottom and fills that hole. Oh yeah, these are a bit tricky to get in, but they do go in with a bit of force. And that's a fit hinge finished. So there you go. This is how you save yourself hundreds of pounds. You can see links in the description below to get these hinges for yourself. As I said before, if I have more time today, I've run out of time, I've got stuff to do this afternoon. Um, I would have adjusted these hinges, which would literally be a five minute job. Now I know how to do it. To, well, maybe a 20 minute job, let's be honest. I can literally now, this is like a new door. It's amazing. It locks easily as well. Um, I'm absolutely delighted. He says it locks easy. No, it does. 
I was the only one in our household who could lock this door before because you had to lift it as you put the door back in position. And as you saw at the start, my hinges were broken. They were adjusted up to their maximum extent. Everything just needed resighting, resorting, leveling up, adjusting. And now let's hope this door lasts another 30 years. We'll just have to see. Um, as always, please leave um, comments below. This isn't the most exciting project I've done. Do check out the other Nick's projects. And uh, I hope to see you again. Take care.